two, two, two. Hello. How are you? Are you sure? How are you? Let's start again. How are you? <laughs> That's all right then. Uh, welcome um, to CDR. A rather special, super, super special CDR session. Um, here with uh, one of the best producers in London right about now. Um, <laughs> and um, really, really honoured for him to share. Um, what isn't even out yet, it's coming out next week. Uh, give it up for Hector Plimmer, people. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. Pleasure, man. It's like, it's pleasure's ours. Um, and so just to give you a ba b bit of background, um, I've known um, Hector for a while now. Um, heard a lot of his early demos during CDR when we were at Plastic. And it's been really great to see his development over the years. Um, him and his kin, kin um, Rulu et al., and it's actually super exciting and uh, a privilege, privilege to hear all of it come together in this album. Um, Thank you. So before we dig deep um, and listen to all of it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every, <laughs> every snare drum, every reverb tale, um, let's talk a little bit about um, you know the need to actually make an album. You know, particularly in these times, and obviously people make albums, but. It seems to me that a lot of people really focus on the EP for Insta, do you know what I mean? Or that one or that three track EP for, you know, things seem to be about short bursts rather than long players. So why did you decide to take that route? Uh, I, haven't really done, I haven't really done any of the short ones. I think it just kind of made sense to do another, to just aim for another, another long one. Mm -hmm. um, it felt kind of weird when I was approaching it because I was just like, the last one was just like a collection of tracks that I'd made over time, and then this one was like, right, I've got to just make it. I've got to make it now, you know. And like, uh, I was like, what even? How do you? What 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 does it need to be like? Does it need to have some kind of message or? And it kind of stunted me for a long, long time. Um, and yeah, I spent a long time just trying and failing, and being like making stuff that just felt forced and. Um, eventually, I kind of just tried to take the approach with the last album that I didn't even know I was taking at that time, which was just to try and make some music and see if it fitted together in like a album shaped thing at the end of it. Um, so, so try and make it a kind of subconscious thing rather than a conscious thing. Right? Yeah, so yeah, because sure every I'm time I sat down to try and do it, it was just like I was just forcing it and it, did it didn't feel right. And I kind of, I, ca I can't. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. I can't really. I was kind of like, because the last one did better than we expected, or and uh, so I was kind of just caught up on a lot of expectations and I don't know stuff that you shouldn't really be thinking about when you're making music. Sure. You know? So you're giving yourself a little bit too much pressure there. Yeah. yeah. Um. And yeah, I mean the label like uh, have been really good and just giving me the time to just be a hermit and, and work on stuff. Um, and yeah, it all came together. It's all kind of different. There's a lot of different vibes on there, but it once it was kind of together, it was like, okay, this kind of works. So l let's talk about the track that really, um, you know, before obviously we'll listen to it, but what was the track that really kind of said, okay, you know what, I'm onto something here, you know, rather than this kind of, you know, pissing around, you know, not quite working out. <laughs> What's the one that's kind of okay? It's all this is some it's element of pissing around. <laughs> 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 Standard. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I w there was one day when I was I had been trying for like months to pin down working with Max Maxwell Owen, and at the last CDR I finally nailed him down and got a date, and then um, yeah we were we arranged a date and I I was like right I uh, texted him the day before like when do you want to meet up. Heard nothing. Tried calling him the, the, the day of the meet, the we were meant to meet up. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then he texted me at like five. He was like, yo, man, I'm just sorry I was in the studio all night last night. I've just woken up. Um, but like in that time, I just kind of got on with it and like uh, made two tracks. And I think those were the two Special. 
two starting so points. <laughs> so, so that was so that was an immediate reaction to being to being let yeah, down. Yeah, I just wanted to wa- work on okay, some music. Cool. Uh, okay, mm. we did eventually hook up and work. On it's not on the album, but um, um, and I haven't been able to, <laughs> haven't been able to m- pin him down since. But <laughs> it will happen one day. You know. H- he'll turn up one day. Yeah. He's a mysterious <laughs> creature. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and he's missed out too, perhaps. You know. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work with him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, during that day, I kind of s- got on with like two tracks, and they were like super. No, one of them was like really dark, and then the other one was quite upbeat, and I just must have been feeling all the emotions that day. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's just been it's been quite a nice process just letting it letting flow if things work then they work if they don't just put them aside and uh yeah yeah how long has it taken uh i don't know <laughs> 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 two years oh yeah. just up to two uh like yeah on and off okay. two years i think yeah yeah um and yeah i've actually not really been other than the project that i do with farley the ukuleko thing i haven't really been i've kind of just had a little I haven't really felt the urge to, like, really get into anything. I've probably started one thing. (laughs) All right, should we start? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, so we're going to do it in, like, three three track segments. Uh, And this first one is with Ego LMA and um, Emma Jean Takre. Let's give it a go. I must die now I have lived well Each 
Nice. That tune's a little. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel listening back to them now? It's good. It's kind of weird sitting here listening back to it. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, when that bass kicks in, it's like, ah. Oh, Big shout okay. out to Corsica, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sound system's awesome. We give it out to play Corsica, man. Yeah, I kind of wish I was sitting there. Amazing system, man. Amazing. Yeah, this is kind of the closest thing to plastic people, that CDR kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd show you a little bit about that last track because it's got a few bits and bobs. Um, sure. Before we those. do that, though. Yeah. So oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. So first track, I a really fitting um, beginning. Um, tell us about how you approached writing that because obviously, in terms of the track is pretty much Ella and, <laughs> and right. You know I mean, and you yeah. We see. So were you just sitting back and letting them do their thing? Well, uh, so I got this little um, uh, guitar pedal called a cap uh, Capistan or Capistan, and it's like a tape delay uh, simulator type thing. But it's got like a loop function. So I had been kind of just exp there's another track on that you'll hear in a bit that where I'd kind of just been experimenting with the loop function because you can like double the thing and uh, uh, and e uh, Ego was around and I was just like let's just try and build a loop and because she's you know she's so good with her like harmonies and layers and stuff um, and yeah this was like the fifth one that we tried and she was a bit like uh, I don't know at first and then we finally got one and yeah so that's just like we set a we set sh we did one thing to the click with a click in her ear and then from then on, it was just overlaying. So she was kind of waiting for it to come back around, and then, um, and then, yeah. And then after that, I kind of wanted something else on there, and I thought Emma would be cool. Um, and at first, I was kind of like wanted her to do stuff alongside the vocal, like following the vocal. Um, but she was like, "There's some notes that I just can't do on the trumpet." And, that, and then I learned that so you can't do the some notes. The on range, the yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, so she was just like, let me just solo over over it, and she did. And then I added my little fake vibraphone <laughs> two notes, <laughs> but distinctive vibraphone. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just kind of yeah, that one's actually called Next to Nothing. That's that's the track. So I kind of had next to no musical input to it, I guess. <laughs> Which I only really realised. Uh, I think, yeah, my girlfriend told me af after. It's like, yeah, you kind of did next to nothing on that on that track, but yeah, I, I think. I'd but those two notes make it, you know. Those two. Those two do you know what? They it's do. About the two notes, they do for me. <laughs> and then yeah, Emma was like, Emma kind of um, follows that towards the end. She does the little like pips. Um, yeah, and then the second track w uh, was the first one I did with Ego. And. Uh, I didn't know. I was kind of like I didn't know. I knew Ego obviously we were like friends and stuff, but like I never worked with her. And uh, so I just kind of sat there, and she sat behind me, and I was just seeing what came out. And then um, every now and then I'd look back, and she'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, it's cool." And then y eventually I looked back, and she was like, "Yeah, I've got all my lyrics." Um, and yeah, we just recorded it like a demo, like a guide. And then she was like, "Oh, I'm gonna record it properly." home and uh we just went with the guide vocal in the end because there I was just I guess a feeling, the feeling that there's something in there sure yeah and it's like there's something in her voice it's got such a like dusty i don't know it's just like a lovely i l like her tone is beautiful yeah, sounding awesome and in terms of the uh, i like your use of um you know celebrating the roland drum machine you know drum there with a bit of 808 drums but yeah. under the hinge of the cr78 there it's quite quite a nice vibe going on there. Yeah, I mean, mm. there's a lot less kind of organic drum sounds in this one. Um, I don't know why. It's just what I was feeling. <laughs> and uh, there are there are elements, but um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of this is this is what kind of caught me up initially. It was like I wanna I, I kind of wanted to try and make some stuff that w could be possible in a dance floor setting, whatever. And so I started making tunes, and they were just sounding like. Kind of At attempts, house attempts tunes. to make <laughs> <it>. sure, sure. <laughs> um, and then yeah, slowly kind of just found my found my own feet in in it. It's um, funny because I guess you know the the great thing about an album is that you can 
you know, you can take those risks, do you know what I mean? Because it's about a body of work. So, you know, on one hand, we're, we're obviously under pressure to make dance floor smashes because that's where a lot of people get their attention in terms of, you know, dance floor and stuff. But equally, there is this whole other space where you can, you know, explore, you know, music yeah, and ideas no really and, and almost like, you know, tease people, which you clearly did on the third track. You know. Yeah, I mean, I really wanted to do some like into like the first track, and there's a few, there's a couple of little just like interludey bits that I really like the idea of like just not committing to a whole tune and just making like a nice snippet. And then yeah, the third one, ugh, I, it's just kind of, I just got that initial like brooding thing, and I just wanted to keep seeing how far I could push it. And obviously, you just got to go with the aim and break. <laughs> but you use it in a really <laughs> clever way. I mean, because uh, you know, you use yeah, it in a, in a, in a kind of footwork, you know, very footwork inspired programming. Do you know what I mean? But you've used the uh, amen in a. Yeah, you know I didn't just want to like. Yeah, g give straight up jungle. But it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. This one kind of goes back to like some of the stuff that I u like. I used to be well into like more kind of break course, I would like Planet Moo and, and Apex and stuff. So that kind of just appeared out of nowhere. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. It's like it could be cheesy, but no. But it's you've, you know, you obviously j you haven't just stuck a you know a one bar loop in there for five minutes. Yeah, you've I wanted clearly to done some pro. You know, you've 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 done a little bit of work in the I did a lot of programming topping. side of things. Just a little bit. Spent a little bit of time on that, didn't you? Yeah, I kind of kind of went in on the on the amen break just because um with the with the cowbells because they're kind of going like. The, the kind of footwork the kind of programming, yeah. And uh, a lot of the time it didn't really work on, on the... So with the aim and break, I was trying to kind of, every now and then, follow the, follow the triplet. Uh, yeah, because otherwise it was kind of just clashing with, yeah, kind of the rhythms were sounding a bit weird. Um, yeah, I just fully, uh, fully sliced it. Sliced you went in, one. man. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I, I, yeah, I kind of just like, yeah. yeah, yeah, just chopped it, chopped it up. Um, and then also, uh, there's some really awkward, weird hums. Uh, actually, there's something quite nice in here because I made this. Yeah, in our flat, we've got like a. It's not a soundproof studio and we've got like a little vent in the uh for like to like air through so whenever i record stuff things sneak in and one of them is like a excuse my horrible out of tune humming but like there's a police car that made it into this one uh not that one uh not that one not that one where is it Gone, it's disappeared. Doesn't like me. Or maybe. Oh, I know why. Uh, it's, it's in the hums, obviously. Oh, it's horrible once you pitch it up. Um. Yeah, <laughs> it's there. <laughs> uh, and this is all me, like, when everyone's out and I'm just like, got the mic here and it's turned up really loud and I'm just like mm. Uh, mm. and then just take the best bits and I did this weird like uh, and everyone's gonna want to come around yours to get that kind of Hector sound now yeah, yeah, get the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. people shouting on <laughs> Sydney my street uh, Hector aircon sound yeah this one's quite aircon as well actually this is like just me going uh, with like heaps of oh it's just like a EQ Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, weird, just weird things like that. I, I try and you know, like try and work. Little in. nice textures, you know, little kind of nice atmospheres that really, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's what I try and just feed in little, like little bits and bobs. And then I kind of found this weird, like acidy sound on my cork that I would never, I've like really hated in the past. Whenever I pass it, and I was like, okay, I can kind of make it work. It's like so cheesy, but. Um, and then got some cowbells, which is like just one recording, and then I've layered them, uh, and like each one is kind of doubled in 
Uh, is that the first percussion element we hear? You know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So up until then, it's just yeah. like kind of the roadsy sound. And yeah. So tell us a little bit about the roadsy sounds. It was really warm. It was I mean almost it's like you'd it's it's morphed them, or you tried not to make it an obvious road sound. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's the um, keyboard, it's but lounge, you lounge lizard. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I stick by it. Harley knows it. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I actually doesn't look like I did. Oh, I just did that to it. <laughs> just took the took the low end off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's just a just a free sound, you know. Um, and I think just low, very gentle, so it's not too like forky. Just like layered it up with some. <sighs> it's kind of just like introduces bits as I did when I was making it. I think I just kind of started with that, went to the next 16, st and just moved along until I got to this point and I was just like needed that final something. It's kind of just like, oh yeah, anyway. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's this, that's this track, basically. So was uh, this a fairly um, organic process, developing this track? It feels quite organic in terms of how it built. How yeah, it I think if it feels kind of forced, I tend to not, I get just not interested in it after a while, and I find it really hard to go back. Um, so yeah, I probably would have just sat down with those that road sound and then just not really stopped until like the point just before the Amen break comes in, basically. Um, Were well you tempted at all, you know, with this track to kind of give it maybe some kind of top line or solo or something, you know, to follow the energy of the Amen break? I, d I just don't. I, I, I don't really do that in my. T I don't know. In my tunes, it's like the melody will be something really set basic. Like um, there's not that many tunes around because I, I, I don't know. I just don't feel like I have. If something comes, then I can I can I can do it. But um, yeah, I kind of I generally leave the like noodly bits to to other people. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think a lot of my stuff is just repetition and building. Yeah, yeah. And, co and contrast as well, you know, definitely with this is the you know how you feel at the beginning. Um, there is a sense there is a sense of the same kind of feeling at the end, but definitely the one the once the drums come in and the energy comes in, it definitely you know takes you to a different place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. As I say, it just kind of shows itself as it as it as it comes along. Um, yeah. And was this a pretty straightforward track to finish? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for ages I was trying to figure out what to do in that last bit, and I was thinking, should I get someone else to solo over it or something? And then I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna just go for it. <laughs> yeah. You guys got questions you'd like to ask? Mesmerized. This, this might zone? take. This might yeah. take forever if we <laughs> <laughs> if we don't keep going. No, we'll be right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll, be right, we'll be good. <laughs> That's just cut me short. Just <laughs> no, but but it seemed mesmerized though. Just think you want to continue, right? In a good way. I hope. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Just yeah. Go for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I didn't really want to just like bring it in. I wanted like the kind of release before like uh dropping it right Drop, uh, dropping it straight in so i kind of um in this point i just uh automated the the fill to this is nerd talk now uh yeah so it's kind of just stays kind of low up until up until the point that it like drops <laughs> Yeah, I, I like I, I'm all about just playing around with automation as much as possible, and like, uh, yeah, seeing seeing how things flow and can change through just one sound. Uh, yeah, kick drum, show us kick drum. Oh, it's just a uh, what is it? Oh, in the Let's drums. Let's get that one out of the way. Someone was going to ask that anyway. So. <laughs> it's this <laughs> Ableton kick. I know you're not already. You know, yeah. I just love the Ableton. Uh, the just a, it's like a max for life yeah. 
kick. Sure. Okay. Um, nice. And then what's this? Just another smaller one underneath. I think this was like a. Oh no! I just built this out of samples. So a lot of layering going on with the kick drum as well. Yeah, I normally put one that's a bit more like airy and then just whack that underneath for like for the weight and then just drum bus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and no EQ. Standard. <laughs> <laughs> no EQ, yeah, nothing. Yeah. Just drum bus. I mean, it kind of EQs it a bit. But this was like a, I was like, because uh. <laughs> I've always struggled, struggled just getting stuff like. No, they really, they, they really um. They really smash it with drum bass. It really solves, it solves a lot of problems. No, it solves <laughs> a lot of problems, man. No, it's great. That would have been like five plugins worth of technology right there. That's it. Stick it on. Sorted. Transit. Yeah, some bit geniuses. Sub, done. Yeah, it's great. Mm. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, it's pretty basic. Like, just drums-wise, this one, other than all that crap. Um, before we move on, just I'm just curious about your slicing. So, you know, some other people would have said, you know, got the AMAM Grake, you know, done slice to MIDI, stick all slices in. In, in drum rack, um, but you've chosen to obviously go the manual route. I think I just enjoy to put myself through it. <laughs> but it was also, I mean, it was also like the, oh, what's going on? It was also the, just the ca the cowbell. It was, I was struggling with the, with the cowbells and it kind of clashing with the rhythms. So I kind of just did that. And I think it gives it a bit more of like a tactile feel oh, as totally well. And I didn't want it like the same loop over and over. So I kind of just, made a loop that I was happy with and then copied it over but then manipulated like edited that loop and then did the same again um and just had to have those kind of triplets every now and then it really works really well nice one thank you thank you man so we should move on yeah mm -hmm. uh what's next ah so this yeah this is the track with Andrew who I actually think I met, I was thinking about it today, I think I met him at CDR at Plastic People. And today I was looking in one of my planning chest drawers and I got the card that he gave me on that day when I met him. It said Ghanaian uh, Planetarium, Andrew Reshom. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, th yeah, we got that one, uh, a little kind of interlude bit, and then a track with um, Pi Eye Collective. So it's the two singles that have come out already. <laughs> make some little animations as well which I'm gonna oh that's wrong oh no that's the old album <laughs> <laughs> been there done that uh, man, <laughs> <laughs> uh. Did 
Yeah. <laughs> I can't speak <laughs> speechless right about now. <laughs> Obviously, we're going to break the Andrew track down. Um, yeah, I just um, want to. Yeah, sorry, go no. for it. No, go for it. I've got, I've got some questions, but you go for it first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So this track, I kind of, I wanted, I, w I, w I wanted some kind of vocal vocalist on it, and I was kind of thinking like, I don't know, some kind of rap like, Cordia Radical, Little Sims kind of vibe, and I uh, just couldn't find it. I was like. Racking my racking my brains, and then um, yeah, Andrew's girlfriend basically gave us a lift home from Ghost Notes one night, and I was like, "Can you recommend anyone? Do you know anyone?" Uh, and then I played him the tune. And he was just like, "Send it to me." And um, yeah, basically, this is this is what I sent to him, which was just like kind of <laughs> kind of like the bare bones, and then I mean. We basically had to go to his. He he invited me. He invited me round like uh, a week or a week or two later, and he had just added like up to it was like a hundred new channels of just like little vocal bits, little bits and bobs. Uh, we condensed it down to these uh, plus the vocals, um, and he kind of. But I just wanted to show like like. What he what he added is like a tune in itself. Like his uh Did you need it? Lord knows that I don't so like do all the vocals he he doesn't like copy and paste any of the choruses, does the whole thing. Does it but uh octave octave higher or octave or his like sometimes there's an octave octave lower that he's he sings and it's just like uh it's like what some of the tell tell me. Uh oh, you can't really hear it there. Um, anyway. Um yeah, and then he kinda added all these like twinkly bits, uh like plucky bits. And then and he's got this guitar that's like a MIDI MIDI guitar, it comes out in MIDI as well, so this this is a guitar that he's turned into a flute. <laughs> uh, and yeah, he's just kind of like, just what take, do you think? Take, take ownership <laughs> of the track, basically, yeah. And we spent like, I don't know, I mean, every time you go to his house, it takes about three hours to get down into the studio and like, just because he's, 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 he's got the chat. Uh <laughs> Um, but yeah, then this one took a really long time to kind of, we kind of just like put it into more manageable yeah. groups of So he basically, sounds. so he came with just like a canvas of ideas, right? Do you know what I mean? As he does, he's, you know, as yeah. you know, he's really prolific. And how yeah. And how how so how did you um, navigate that? You know, clearly he had a, you know, he just laid all this stuff down, right? And it makes sense to him. Yeah, and also he uses Cubase, which makes no there sense to me <laughs> whatsoever. Um, yeah, <laughs> Cubase. <laughs> For some. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and we just kind of, well, it was more like a term in terms of like arranging stuff yeah. in their kind of sonic areas. Um, and then he sent me all the vocals um, just because it was, t it was, it was too mad. I don't know. He's just like, I, he just holed up in his. In his, in, in, his his basement. in his Andrew yeah. bubble, no. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, how did was there a negotiation there? You know, because I'm, I'm obviously he has a, a v you know, has a vision for what he laid down, right? You know, and I guess you know, in some respects, y you respect that, of course. Yeah. But you also are con are interested in form and making sense of it from an arrangement point point of view. So, how did you navigate that? Yeah, I mean, basically, I had the the uh, the arrangement didn't didn't change from what I sent to him. I I basically made the track and then was like, I kind of just thought he'd put some vocals on it, um, and then he just went mad, <laughs> uh, which I'm really grateful for. I mean, it's mental. Um, but uh, I was going to say something. I've forgotten it. It's gone from my head. Um, yeah, I he oh yeah, his, his he was just like, I want it to be epic. So I think he, I think he managed. I think he managed. <laughs> um, I think we agree, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's probably the most epic. It's quite, it's quite an epic one. Yeah, no, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. Um, I was curious about the, um, you know, the vocal sound for this is different to say the ego track. 
Um, was that a del- no? Was that an intentional thing? Was it deliberate, or was it that just the way it came out? It was just that Andrew. He, he just disappeared for a week and then popped up, and this is this is what he added. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It kind of it's 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 lucky that it's kind of worked with the rest of the tracks. But um, yeah, I think he spent a lot of time on the vocals because there's just it's like a it's like a barbecue sh- sh- quartet at times. You know? He's like. Like so much hate in your heart. It's kind of like a call and response, call and response type thing. I guess you show yeah. me a cause again. Did you feel it on you? Acting like somebody else, baby, you're somebody else. Actually, I couldn't tell. I put my help, help. Maybe you're somebody else Acting like somebody else Maybe you're somebody else Actually, I couldn't tell He's a beast <laughs> um, Big up Andrew, man Yeah Yeah mm. Yeah Should we continue? Yes <laughs> Thank you Okay, so the next three Um there's another kind of... Oh, actually, before we jump to oh it, yeah. Just, yeah, just very quickly on the other two. So the second yeah. track felt kind of pedal business capstone. Yeah, so that was, yeah, that that was, was my you first... You, ri- you rinsed it on that, yeah. That was like my first... Uh, actually, yeah, I made that when I first got it. I was like, tape delay, everything. Um, but yeah, that was my first kind of experiment with, with the looper. And after that, Ego came around and we tried them. Um, but yeah, it's cool because you can kind of double yeah. the speed and half the speed. Yeah. Um, and I kind of just a really recorded nice texture, a, it's a really nice texture to it. Yeah. Recorded a little bar of drums, and then they kind of disintegrated, and then I added the keys, and then doubled it, and then added some more keys, and then I, d- I don't know how I got there, but <laughs> there's like and long and it's, and audio, it's, yeah, and it's all within its own. You know, you didn't have to export it to the, you know to Ableton or whatever. You just literally did everything. It, uh, yeah, I mean, I recorded it as I went, yeah, um, yeah. so it's just a one channel, one track. Yeah. Saves on the mixings, easy. Just it is yeah. what it is. <laughs> <literally>. <laughs> it is what yeah. it is, <laughs> which is what most of my music is. To be fair, I'm just like push some buttons and see what <laughs> comes <laughs> out. <laughs> and we'll talk um, more about yeah. When we listen to this batch, it'd be good to kind of get your thoughts on the, the, the kind of mixing process. Um, but let's listen to this batch. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So this is like a the next one's like a little into like a interlude. It's probably one of my favorite. Like it's with Ego LMA again, and like when she sent me the vocals, I just just gives me shivers. Uh, and then there's like a little dancey one and then a track with Alexa Harley as well, um, which I'm gonna show a little bit about after. <laughs> Thank you. 
to show you something just with that last track basically um we recorded the vocals at Squ adam scrimshaw's house where's adam at he's here somewhere oh he's hi he's hiding in the dark man. <laughs> there you go big up adam <laughs> man nice, nice yeah yes. <laughs> yeah man adam runs Great. a label and yeah, does yeah I I know adam. plastic people tirelessly does, man, I know. Yeah. to uh push my music which i'm ever grateful for <laughs> um but yeah so we recorded it uh at Adam's house, and I just wanted to show you how point, how on point Alexa Harley is. All the producers are here as well. Go oh, say hello to stand her. up, stand up, stand <laughs> up. Nice one. See it. There she is. Yeah, because basically, I mean, we were just kind of doing takes. We did, we did twelve takes, and as a joke, I kind of just asked Adam if we could just play them all together, and uh, this is how we ended up. And they're all in there. I had to just take out some of the noise in between because 12, 12 things of silence apparently isn't, isn't silence. <laughs> um, it's not quite in key, is it, Sarah? But yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty mad. As we no, it sounds really beautiful. Oh, it's kind of cracking, but can't handle all the channels. But then you get some mental, like, Day weird... Just like from different takes, people uh, just kind of making, yeah, I kind of just wanted to 
revel in that. Joyful <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it's, you know, in terms of vocal sound, this track's obviously different to all the other vocal led tracks. Um, so you literally what thought what it'd be like to hear all 12 tracks together and, yeah. thought, oh and that sounds great sounds like. and, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. and that was it right yeah, yeah. so yeah. you yeah. have like the like kind of mistakes and stuff in some of them but they there's so many that they yeah, it's just and then you just get these weird these crazy harmonies that are just harley trying different things out that kind of works and like yeah i mean sometimes uh, you must have taken some bits out but it's pretty much it's pretty much all it there really well this was the hardest yeah. one to like get the vocal kind of uh, Adam did that <laughs> he, um, quite a lot of notching going on yeah, yeah I mean I'm kind I'm, I'm actually still learning all that mm. stuff but um yeah Adam uh yeah this was the hardest one to kind of get the vocal mm. on a similar similar level mm. to the to the just because there's so many right yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but it sounds no it sounds really unique it's really really cool um, and then the other two, we had step. Yeah, I probably. Sh I mean, I should have just played the radio edit to that one. But um, <laughs> yeah, I kind of. That's another one. I just wanted to see it through and just build it as I go, mm -hmm. and uh, make something that people can step to. Move their bodies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and, and, and we played. Play we played this one live at Ghost Notes a while ago, and um, it was like the first time that people were like dancing to me playing anything live and actually it was the last tune and Maxwell and like makes the tune out of it and I was like <laughs> nice <laughs> um, yeah and then yeah before the sun I mean it's just like the one with Vego is just like heartbreaking I don't know what it is well I do it's just so melancholy like uh, and how did that track come about was it was it intentional um, that it was going to be a skit or was it again just something you wrote together and, and became I mean, I I made the instrumental on my own, and then when she came around again, and we were just like throwing ideas around, and then I just sent her home with a bunch of a bunch of stuff, and she was like, "Send me that one." <laughs> <laughs> and then we were kind of playing with the idea of like making it a bit longer, but I I I think it's just short and sweet, to the point. S she says what she n needs to say, and then it kind of comes out. And that must have been another one where I got the capstan because it's literally on everything. It's too. Almost too much, but no. Not you can never have too <laughs> much. <laughs> no. much never, never have too much <laughs> tape bay or you know guises of it. Um, it feels, uh, uh, you know, listening to the album, it feels a really li relaxed affair um, in terms of, particularly with the collaborations, because collaborations, as you can imagine, can be quite challenging at times when you're dealing with your creative vision and your collaborators' um, creative vision. Um, how did you navigate with that, with this album? It feels pretty easygoing from w the way you're talking about uh, it. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. basically just been the same approach to how I make it myself. We just kind of hang out and and uh, see what comes of it. Like uh, with with that track Stack, uh, with Pi Eye Collective, um, yeah, we made, we made both the tracks the same day because he, he just came around and we just, it just, flowed so nicely um and uh yeah they've all just been e yeah easy i mean like it's weird because it's i mean obviously it's we're, we're working we're working hard and but it's just it flows so nicely that it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it at all um and uh yeah yeah i mean the uh in the next three there's a track with pi collective as well where we literally he was telling me about a thing that um, coders do where they set a timer for two minutes and then one person does something and then when the two minutes is up, you have to step back and somebody else. Almost like a relay race kind of thing. Yeah, yeah so yeah. We, we made this track with that, with that. Well, it's like the last one in the next set of three. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no, the second one in the next set of three. Um, yeah, we just did two minute, two minute intervals um, and then just free, free range. Um, yeah, it's just trust. Uh, I, I mean, uh, everybody that I work with, I, I trust, and I, you know. I but there's also openness in your part, which is great. You know, I think you've got to because essentially it's your album, right? It's your, you know, yeah. it's your vision, but you also you're very open to who you're working with, and as you said, trust their artistic output. You know. Yeah, I mm. mean, I've been kind of lucky enough that nothing's come about, and I've been like, I don't like that. Um, 
and I, I don't like sending stuff back and forth. So when we're in the moment, it's it's kind of a lot easier to be like, let's try something else, or like, um, and vice versa. You know, that's what it's all, it's all about. Um, but yeah, it's just been easy going. Yeah, just kind of sit down and make some tunes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, let's go for the next batch. Cool. Uh, so yeah, this one's like another broody one, brooding one. Uh, this is Adam's favorite, I think. I think this is one of the tracks that I made when Maxwell stood me up. Um, <laughs> should we? Should we go to? There's four more. Should we go to the end? Um, and then we've got two minute switch, which I made with um, Pio Collective. Then another one with Andrew Ashong Wall Street, and then. Uh, like a weird one that just came out last minute and um, uh, it kind of fits on the end there. I just like it too much to <laughs> throw it away. Um, yeah, cool. So yeah, this one. Thank you. 
Thank you. Nice, man. That's it. Yeah. Little, like, I don't know where that, wa- that last one came from, <laughs> but I'm so happy that it, no, it's it's came it to me. No, it works, it works. It's like a, uh, it must be like, it's some talking heads kind <laughs> of thing. And I did look, I did the little noodles on, on that one. So you, ca- you, can, you can go off I when you, yeah. When yeah, you I had a little noodle. <laughs> you had a moment. <laughs> but it really feels like you had fun with that one as well, do you know what I mean? It yeah. It's, it's really kind of quirky, quite groovy, you know. Just yeah, most of like my tunes are yeah. really boring, so... No, at all. Just oh, um, no, it's definitely yeah. it's it's. Thi- but this is why it's so weird t- to me. It's so like, I- it's not really. I just I find it so hard to make something that doesn't sound sad and like brooding. <laughs> well, 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 the last <laughs> track like sounds optimistic and happy. How do you feel? Yeah, about so maybe yeah, the so next one yeah, will be exactly. <laughs> slightly more positive. I don't know. Yeah, there's a mix of emotions in there. It probably sums up how uh, what I go through. Every now and then. Certainly. Yeah. Well it's <laughs> it's and, and also, it's very, you know, it's very heartfelt. You know, it's very kind of heads music. You know what I mean? It's like it's it really feels what well begs to be taken seriously. As in, it's really, you know, sonically, it's really deep, you know? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I spend a lot of time nitpicking and yeah. uh, just getting the sounds to how I want them to be and um, exp- it just exploring sounds and stuff like that and then having layers uh, atmospheres so talk us through the the mixing process uh, how have you approached it this album um kind of the same way that i d- always do which is probably not enough but um uh, yeah i just kind of do it really f- really basic I as, just as you go then so you mix no, it as you I go, no? I, well okay. yeah i, d- I kind of get things l- level i don't really unless it's really like shouting that it needs to be like eq'd or something i would generally generally not mess around too much because i just want to keep making stuff but like yeah i kind of do the levels uh, as a like the levels of different elements as i go um and then yes it's super basic just kind of eqs the compression every now and then drum bus on everything that needs to be yeah present yeah yeah but um, you, you you mix you mix each track as it you know because i guess when you're working on albums there's obviously different approaches you can take right so one approach is to take is to you have the rough compositions um and then you make time to mix the whole thing as one body of work or you can actually mix you know obviously mix as you go you know how have uh, you taken this one um yeah i mean uh, yeah i kind of i did i did before sending them to be mastered, I kind of mixed. I did like a final mix, final thing on all the tracks, but like, I don't really have like a formula or anything, and they all kind of end up working. T- I think it's Adam actually. Adam does. Adam masters the tracks, and um, it's really helpful because he sends me them back, and things pop out, and I'm like, okay, I need to change. So like, yeah, the one with Harley, we did. We mastered three times. Yeah. Same with the one with Andrew. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just yeah, I just simp- just basic and don't because it's all in the box, right? You know, you do everything in the box. Yeah, on, la- on that laptop, literally, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I have a few synths and yeah. or bits and bobs, but, but you re- just record them in. But mixing and stuff. The mixing is all in the box. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like Ableton essentials. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Sounds really fat. And Thank you. Deep and Thank deep you for letting yeah. me um, share it Thank today. You. Thank you. <laughs> it's out next w- Friday, by the way, everyone, uh, on digital. Um, yeah. And yeah, so physical will come a bit, l- bit later on. Exactly. So before I l- see if they've got a couple of questions, um, how do you um, talk us really kind of running order? I mean, it, it sounds really cohesive, you know, for, you know, especially listening to it for the first time. But is there a lot of thought that goes into actually, you know, how you? Yeah, I mean, order? i I did initial or I did an initial order, and I I just had that I- on my headphones for a long time, and I couldn't really get out of it. And then I sent it to the guys from the label, and um, Adam, uh, Adam again, it's Adam man, <laughs> he he kind of put it into more of this 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 order, which makes a bit. I did it kind of like a mix. So I kind of just started slow and went went fast. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was so, yeah, there's obviously so many different kind of vibes on there. And so 
it's kind of a miracle that it does all work together, but it does. I think it does. <laughs> Your output, man. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Guys, you got a question you'd like to ask? Or thoughts? A question at the back there. You might have to just shout it out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does sound amazing. Over to, yeah. over to you. Adam, do you want to come up here? Come and say hello. Come on, come out come here. Come on, man. Shadows. There he is. Yeah, <laughs> just come on. Adam Scrimshire. Also, he released an album about a month ago, and yes, this is my record of the year. You've got to go and check oh it out. Mate, I'm not just saying it. Yours is. Yours is. I know I'm biased, is. but I'm not just saying it. Scrimshire. Scrimshire. Um, the mastering, though, on Hector's beautiful album is um, mostly done. I'm using UA, actually. I'm uh, using an Apollo, so I'm, I'm mastering for with that mostly. Um, in the past, we've used some real uh, tape, quarter inch, but uh, I, I didn't have access this time around. So mostly, um, in some cases, I'm actually running through like a preamp or something first to, to, to get a little bit of extra energy in there or a particular thing. I might work through one particular preamp just to give it a little extra color. And then there's normally some kind of tape emulation in there at some point. But... Uh I try to keep as as few elements as possible. Uh, I don't s try to squash too hard. I like to leave the dynamics, and Hector's got a lot of dynamic in his in his in his in his music. So, I think for me, the mastering really is 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 doing as as little as possible um, with a lot of our music. We do a lot of jazz on the label as well, and I, and I, and I just feel like um, I really trust the people, the artists, and their mixing. Um, and we work. We try to feed back and get to that point where the mix is is, is where we want it to be. And part of the, as we as Hector said, some of the mastering process is about that really. Um, so, yeah, I run it through a preamp, maybe through a manly uh, massive passive, um, uh, one or two compressors like the LA2, just for very 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 delicate little things, just to deal with peaks. And then in the odd case where we've got some bass build up, we'll go in and be a bit more surgical with it. But but honestly, um, n nothing much more clever than that, really. We just I just try and keep it as simple as possible. And that that tune with the break, uh, the Amen break towards the beginning, you kind of just bumped yeah, it up a few. Yeah, actually, yeah. I so I mastered that as almost as two separate tracks in a way because. Uh, um Thankfully, Hector is okay with this. I, I felt that he'd maybe been slightly polite with the second section when the breaks come, so I, I literally cut it and, uh, and and slammed that section. Uh, I'm thankful for <laughs> it. Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> oh. What's the biggest? Uh, um, yeah, on honestly, yeah. I mean, uh, he hearing it in in a lot of places is really useful. And, we, and in fact, for us, we we did a listening session at Brilliant Corners, and and it threw up some issues both in the mastering and in the uh, and in the mixes that we we we, th we then worked on. It's really difficult. You have different uh, relationships with different mastering engineers, and and sometimes um, you can't afford to be messing around too much uh, because. Uh it's you know there's, there's there's not as many opportunities for feedback process um yeah i feel i feel so lucky that because i mean i know a lot of people will probably take my first mix down and then do that and then <laughs> you, you know it's so lucky that you're able to kind of send it back to me and yeah, be yeah, like totally. this needs tweaking because totally. it sometimes stuff comes about back and it's like this sounds different yeah <laughs> it's so weird I don't know. No, sometimes yeah. sometimes things just pop out, and yeah. it's like y it wasn't popping out before, but through the process, it's suddenly like. I think I think there's there's two things that I I think if if it's an album like this, I think it's really really helpful, and you touched on this as well, um, and I do this. I mix all the tracks, but then I go through a, a quite a long period of then mi bringing the tracks in and having them, c always bringing them back into a whole album project. And then going back to each one, and then mixing them next to each other for s for balance, to know that that there is a 
there's a, a, a sonic, there's a characteristic that's consistent, regardless of there being stylistic differences from track to track, that at least the overall feeling, there's something there. You know, you're not going, oh, the, 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 the bass is so distinctly different or, or, or in, in this particular one. Um, and, and other than that, I think it's, it's really worth, uh, it's probably worth, especially if you've not necessarily got a particularly close relationship with a mastering engineer, it is worth uh, doing some some pushing, some limiting yourself before you even think about sending off to really hear, because it's suddenly you realise that you actually you've got some quite horrible distortion in one of the tracks that you can't, you just can't hear it until it's until it's limited and pushed up. So, I think that's it's it's worth it's worth uh, hitting your tracks a little bit with a limiter before you send off if you don't if you don't already do that just to really bring out some of those quiet things that you you wouldn't notice otherwise, but. But I'm sorry, I don't have any particularly <laughs> strong advice on that one. Yeah, that's a one of thing. Mm. So just instantly, is, is mastering your background? No, no, no. I was going to say, because I, I, I know you as a producer and a yeah. DJ, yeah. so why did you feel the need to, you know, go down the mastering route? Um, we wanted to get the masters that we <laughs> wanted, the way we wanted them to sound, um, and... You know, also because we were feeling out our way with the label as well, um, we had a dream of doing as much in-house as possible. Really, uh, there's a definite financial benefit to doing that, um, but we kind of vision it, had a vision of how we wanted our records to sound, and so we we started. Also, that that getting into that mastering process really informs our mixes. And so learning more about mastering, learning more about how the sounds start to emerge when you start to push and, 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 and toy with this stereo um, really, really uh, gives you a huge amount of information about how you're actually approaching your mixes in the first instance and getting them to that point that when you get them to the mastering engineer, they've got a little less work to do potentially. I find it well, well on for that because uh, you know for a lot of people mastering is obviously of a scary art you know it's the kind of the, l the last yeah. domain right you know but what's super cool is that you know because obviously you know it's your label and you're the mastering engineer you've almost got like a almost like a collaborative relationship you know you have the confidence in taking attack to a good place and just before I you know the final frontier you can obviously report back you can obviously refine the mixes yeah I mean I went and, and you've got this kind of really interesting you know kind of like ping pong you know really constructive ping pong and between you two, just before we kind of, actually after the after the brilliant corners thing, I went to Adams, and we kind of just sat down and just went through it one final time and kind of. Yeah, you actually did a. Yeah. You essentially mixed it on your on your Mac there with me, and then passed it back to me again. And yeah, then we, we mastered it, and then yeah. we took it back out, and we did a little bit more mixing. Yeah, we did two versions: one with yeah. one with a louder. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Andam, thanks so much, man. Yeah, Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Wicked, there's a question over here somewhere. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> What's your work life balance? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, wo I work as a graphic designer, free freelance as well, and then just try and pull it all together, <laughs> just hope for the best. Yeah, so I do this, DJ, uh, I just signed to a publisher's last year, so hopefully, eventually, that will bring something back. Who did uh, you go with? Uh, Manners McDade, they're cool. called. Um, and yeah, I mean, some months it's like hor horrendous, <laughs> <laughs> and then other months it's, it's not so bad, um, yeah. Kano, so I can hear her laughing. <laughs> That's my girlfriend. I live with her, and she has to deal with all of it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a weird one because it's so like, yeah, tying it in with with life and like being able to find time to make music and stuff, and dealing with like creative blocks and stuff like that is all just part of it, and it's can get really intense a lot of the time. But um, I kind of just tr sticking with it. And see, just I, I feel like, I just yeah, you know, you just got to keep positive keep and have people, pushing, people pushing, that support yeah. you. Yeah. Um, my, my mom's here as well. She yeah, where's mum? Hey. Yeah. 
Hey. I think that's the first time she's heard it properly as well. But you know, Wicked, yeah. It's like Mummy Plymouth on the house. Yeah, it's a nice one. Good to meet you. Um. <laughs> 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 so we have you to thank. It's fantastic. The drums at her house. <laughs> 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 yeah. Enough said on that one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. Uh, the question over here. Hi, Helen. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Uh, playing drums at mum's house, <laughs> <to> <laughs> playing like uh, like Red Hot Chili Peppers and Jimi Hendrix and like Nirvana and stuff like that, and then just starting to kind of do a little bit of music production at secondary school, uh, and then kind of getting more into club scene and like dubstep and stuff like that, and. Uh, then kind of bringing the drums back again and just listening to loads of music and exploring stuff and uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it all started just being in a rubbish rock band with my mates in in school, basically. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, thank you, man. Well, this Who has been Albert's favorites. Albert's favorites. Yeah. Yeah. So Hector, what's the album title? Uh, Next to nothing. Next to nothing. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, out next Friday. Next Friday, digital out in a couple of weeks. Uh, oh, thank you guys. I'm so happy that I could share it with you guys. Yeah. I've been like holding on to it uh, yeah. impatiently. Cool. And then, yeah, we're doing like a we're doing a launch party a month after the launch on the 22nd of November at Peckham Audio. Please buy tickets and come because we're doing it all with the label and we need to sell tickets. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, exactly. <laughs> Hector, thank you so much. Thank man. you, man. Thanks for having me.